Hey guys, it's Scotty from Nova Hardware, and today we're going to be talking about KB Lake Mobile. Find out more after the intro. So, what exactly is KB Lake Mobile, you may be asking yourself. KB Lake Mobile, at least in its terms of this video, will be the i7-7500U, and Skylake Mobile, which I'll be referring to, will be the i7-6500U. The 7500U will be right here, and the 6500U will be right here. I'll be putting the specs there so you can see the differences. Now, this is only a video for the mobile chips. I'll be making one for the desktop chips when they come out, but if most of you click off, I understand. I had the ability to test the Razer Blade Stealth 2016 V1 and V2. The V1 had the Skylake chip in it, and the V2 had the KB Lake chip in it. Now, I'm going to talk about the results a little bit here, but more on that up in this video up here. But what I'm going to be really talking about is the differences between the chips themselves. The real differences that you'll see uh, can be found in the base and boost frequencies of the processor itself. So the KB Lake chip is a lot faster than the Skylake chip, and that's due to the fact that it has performance increases uh, down on the architectural level. They managed to refine their process for making the actual chips themselves so they can make them at a more efficient rate and also get a higher clock frequency in a smaller space, which is extremely efficient and also yields for greater uh, future and potential for Intel and other companies alike. NVIDIA did this recently with the Pascal line. The Pascal line of uh, chips really is Mascal, Maxwell, just really, really, really well uh, engineered so that it had higher clock frequencies on a smaller die. I'll be putting a video in the description down below for those of you who are interested in learning out more about that. Now, these chips are very conveniently named. They are i7s, but they have no form of performance similar to an i7. In fact, they don't even stack up to an i3 on the desktop side. The i3-6100 is more powerful than either of these chips, let alone both of them combined. Now, moving on from that, the i7 name has really just become a brand name at this point. It doesn't really mean performance at the king anymore. It kind of means this is the best for this line of processor. So back in the day, the Core 2 Duo meant Core 2 2 cores. The Core 2 Quad meant Core 2 4 cores. And that meant a lot to people at the time. When the i3, i5, i7 line came out, it kind of was associated with the higher the number, the better. And it's really lost meaning because of the mobile line. That's just my personal opinion, and I'm not a huge fan of the way that the mobile line has been named. But I'll be purchasing a Zen CPU system. I'll be getting a Zen system early 2017 when that finally is released, because I want to see what the hype is about. I'm curious. I'm genuinely curious. I want to see, is there actual competition? Is AMD back? Because Intel and AMD have been having this whole blow for the last, what, 20, 30 years of them trading who's the king? Now, how does this all tie into mobile? Well, the mobile chips, or at least where this one's going to be used, is it's going to be used in Ultrabooks most often. And this is going to be fantastic for Ultrabook performance. The CPUs don't have the world's greatest amount of cache, only about 4 megabytes on board, but what they do have on board is enough for them to be snappy. Now, with Windows updates tied into it, if you're using Windows on your PC, these CPUs are going to be an atrocity. The anniversary update it took over four and a half hours on the machine that I had it uh, installed in, which was the Blade Stealth 2016 V1. Now, that whole process was awful. The system was unusable for multiple hours, and it was just basically useless. The lower base frequency and maximum boost frequency of the CPU didn't help either. Not to mention the fact that these CPU cores are not very strong. They're relatively weak. Limiting itself to only a 15-watt package prevented the CPU from being able to increase its clock frequencies, without causing damage to itself or allowing the system fans to keep up with it. So the CPU is very nice in the sense that it'll be a great Ultrabook CPU, but when it comes down to raw performance and number crunching, it will not be the greatest. A lot of people are using this with the core. I don't think it's the greatest idea at all, just on the fact that uh, Thunderbolt 3 only can carry four PCI Express lanes over it. And if you're using other attachments, such as the Ethernet connectors and USB connectors, you're going to be sacrificing many PCI Express lanes just to get the functionality out of the core. The combined cost from the blade and the core and the graphics card will run you really close to $1,700, if not at the $2,000 threshold mark. For that amount of money, you could have bought a gaming PC and a really nice gaming laptop, and you could have even bought a Chromebook at that, and you could have had three machines. But if you really are dead set on getting one machine, 
I guess you could do it, but you're going to be wasting a lot of money in my opinion, just because of the fact that you're not going to see really good performance scaling. These two cores and two threads on either of these machine, uh, on either of these chips will not be uh, adequately servicing any GPU hooked up through the core, or any GPU for that matter, well enough to justify the cost for it. That's the end of this video. Please hit the like button down below if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, and comment down below and let me know how I'm doing. Also, while you're down there, please hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned. I've got more great content planned for you guys coming up very soon, including Twitch streams and other things. My name is Scott from Nova Hardware. Thanks for tinkering with us.